One morning, Percy was impatient. He was wearing a new coat of paint and longed for everyone to see it. The other engines were still dozing, but not Percy. Driver should be here by now. What's he doing? Sleeping, grunted Gordon. But that means I'll be late. The coaches will be waiting and the passengers will get cross. Rubbish, huffed Henry. It's still early, added James. You just want to show off. No, I don't. Never mind, Percy, said Thomas. It'll soon be time for work. But be careful, or you might run into danger. And Duke is not here to save you. D -d Duke? stuttered Toby. You mean our hero? A large painting of Duke hung in the engine shed. The very same, said Thomas. Driver told me the story. Listen. And this is the story Thomas told them. Long ago, when Peter Sam was still called Stuart and Sir Handel Falcon, they worked with Duke on his old railway, but Falcon still had a lot to learn. The manager came to see him. Falcon, I'm pleased with your work so far. Now you must learn a difficult part of the line. We call it the Mountain Road. Falcon was excited. Yes, please, sir. So tomorrow, when you have a new coat of paint, you will go on it. Duke will explain everything. Huh, thought Falcon. Duke's an old fuss pot. Next day came. Listen, warned Duke, the mountain road is difficult. I'll lead. No, replied Falcon, I'll lead. How can I learn the route with you lumbering ahead and blocking the view? Suit yourself, said Duke, but never mind the view. Look at the track. The engine set off. Look at the track, puffed Duke. Never mind the view. Fusspot, fusspot, replied Falcon. Fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy, fuddy duddy. The engine speed grew slower and slower. Don't dawdle, don't dawdle, urged Falcon. No hurry, no hurry, puffed Duke. Soon they approached a tunnel. Falcon didn't like the tunnel. It was curved, and he couldn't see. I want to get out. I want to get out, he sighed. One moment, everything seemed safe. But then, suddenly... Falcon was derailed and hung dangerously over the edge. Duke bravely held on with all his strength. Stop shaking, he called. I can't hold you if you shake. Duke's driver and fireman worked quickly to make the two engines safe again. Then came more trouble. Water, cried Duke's fireman. Duke needs water, quickly. Luckily, there was a workman's cottage nearby. Soon, everyone was passing jugs, buckets, kettles, and saucepans filled with water until Duke's thirst was quenched. All the while, Duke was building more strength. At last, with everyone's help, he was able to pull Falcon back onto the rails. Then they started off once more. The manager was waiting at the top station. He apologized for the accident. Your Duke, said the passengers, is a hero. He stood firm like a bulldog and wouldn't let go. Falcon was grateful too. Thank you for saving me, Duke. I don't know why you bothered me after I'd been so rude. Oh, well, replied Duke. You just had a new coat of paint. It would have been a pity if you'd rolled down the mountain and spoiled it. Scarloe and Reneus work on the railway that weaves round lakes and along mountain sides. Their coaches are filled with visitors and the engines are proud to run the line come rain or shine. The 
engines will never let their passengers down, but they are old and they tire more easily. Their drivers understood this and they spoke kindly to them. There's more than enough work for both of you on this railway. The manager is sending two more engines to help us run the line. Scarloe and Reneus were pleased with this news and promised to give the new engines a big welcome. When Sir Handel and Peter Sam arrived, they found they had much to learn. What a small shed, grunted Sir Handel. This won't do at all. We're much too good for this old shack. I think it's nice, said Peter Sam. Ha, huh, replied Sir Handel. What's that rubbish? Shh, said Peter Sam. That's Scarloe. He's famous. And then he whispered to Scarloe. I'm sorry, Scarloe. Sir Handel's upset now, but he's quite nice, really. Scarloe felt sorry for Peter Sam. Now, Sir Handel, said the fireman, I will get you ready for work. I'm tired. Let Peter Sam go. He'd love it. No, you're first. Sir Handel puffed away to fetch his coaches. He didn't like the look of them at all. Whatever next? Those aren't coaches, they're cattle cars. Woo! screamed the coaches. What a horrid engine! It's not what I'm used to, clanked Sir Handel. He rolled to the platform just as Gordon arrived. Hello, who are you? I'm Gordon. Who are you? I'm Sir Handel. I've heard of you. You're an express engine. So am I. But I'm used to new coaches, not these cattle cars. Do you have new coaches? I see you do. We must have a chat. Sorry I can't stop. We must keep time, you know. Gordon was speechless. Clouds of steam filled the air as Sir Handel huffed and puffed along the line. He was still cross when they reached the top station. Sir Handel was hoping for a rest, but his driver thought otherwise. We'll leave the coaches now and fetch some cars from the quarry. Cars! snorted Sir Handel. Cars! I won't! So there! Sir Handel was about to cause a great deal of trouble. Told you, said Sir Handel. By the time workmen came to rescue him, Sir Handel was feeling rather silly. To make matters worse, there stood Sir Topham Hatt. His message to Sir Handel was brief and blunt. I shall talk to you later. Then he and the fireman left with Peter Sam. Sir Handel felt sillier still. Come on, said his driver. Let's get you back on the rails. When Sir Handel crawled home, he found Sir Topham Hatt waiting for him. You're a very naughty engine. I hope I can trust you to behave when you next come out of the train. After hearing that, I'm sure Sir Handel will, aren't you?